Terry M3 here with a video on a car that I have not driven in a while and a lot of you are surprised that I even have this thing. What is it? It's the E63 BMW M6. Yeah, that car just right over my shoulder. And I've had this thing for almost 13 years with only 19,000 miles. And so the question is, why do I still have this car? and what's my ownership experience been like. So this video is gonna talk all about it. If you're not following me here on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe, turn notification on, and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter if you want live videos of when I do these things, live updates. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk about this crazy German beast and why I still have it. Hey, uh, what's up guys, Dr. M3 here, and uh, yeah, you haven't seen this car in a while, a lot of you are like, do you still have that? Well, you may say, well, what the hell is that he's driving? It's not the Performante, or the Aventador, or the i8, so what could this be? Well, this is actually a very special car to me, this is the E63. BMW M6. That's right. This is the car that has the V10 motor naturally aspirated from BMW. And unfortunately, yeah, this is probably the last of the naturally aspirated V10s from Lamborghini. Huh, from Lamborghini. That's what I'm thinking from uh, BMW in a long time. I think it's done. Everything is now forced induction or is going to be electrified, kind of like Lamborghini. <laughs> um, Ferrari is already gone there. They've, the, everything for them now is turboed and you know, the noise is just not the same. But the focus of this video is going to be my 12 years of ownership, actually going on 13 of this V10 BMW, the pinnacle, if you ask me, of their design. Now, um, lots of people are going to be like, oh my god, that transmission, yes, it's SMG, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I love this car, and you're going to see why in just a moment as I talk through my 12 years of ownership of this car. Now, if you haven't followed me, and you're not following me, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on because I'm probably going to do a little bit more with this car and my other cars before the driving season is over. All right, let's talk about my years of ownership of this car. Well, it's been incredible. Now, I have on this, exactly as we're driving now, 19,461 miles. And you're gonna be like, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's because there are a few years that I've put very little miles on this car because um, sometimes it's at a remote garage and it's a little bit more difficult to drive this car. But my time in ownership has been absolutely amazing. And I'll tell you why I love this. One, there's still nothing like a naturally aspirated engine and especially a big one. This one revs out to um, uh, something like 8,600 if I recall. Let's see here. The engine is warm. So yeah, about 8,400, 8,600. And it's just, the thing just sounds amazing. Now the exhaust on this car is not the stock exhaust. In fact, a buddy of mine, Autovlog, just picked up a M5 version of this, a V10, the E60 uh, M5. and. Uh, I think he's going to be looking at getting an exhaust because, yeah, it kind of, you really do need it, honestly. Um, this uh, car is a little quiet. This is a little quiet uh, without it. So this car is fitted. It's the only sort of power mod, if you want to call it, that, that's, um, that this car has been fitted with. I have the Eisenman race exhaust on this car and... <laughs> That's the reason why I love this thing. It's got the oval exhaust. The next one is a little reminiscent of the um, AMG, but it fits the back 
of this car so well, not to mention it sounds great. There's no droning. Um, on the other hand, there's a Meister shaft that um, the Meister shaft exhaust, which frankly is even louder and is just too loud for me, to be honest. But I love this exhaust. It's crazy good. Um, it fits this car. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I would do it all over again. All right, so my years of ownership has been marked by just a routine maintenance. In fact, oddly enough, there is one year uh, when I had the 458 Italia where the service on the M6 was, um, I think it was something like 1400 1500 bucks, um, and the 458 was only $800. And that kind of shocked me that time, but it only happened once. And honestly, um, the service for these cars, they've, been, they've run pretty well. Now, I will tell you this, if you watch and read the videos online and everybody, what you see is all the bad stuff, right? Oh, the engine is unreliable, the transmission, this has SMG, and it's the SMG3, which is the best of the transmission. And again, I, I would say if it's one thing, maybe it's the, weakest thing of this car now, but for the time when it was created was amazing, was revolutionary as a gearbox. I tried, look, I'm going to change a gear. And you hear the boom, boom, and the change of gear. That is so much slower than a dual clutch. It's slower than the Aventador even, which is a single clutch. And I get it because by today's standards, this is slow. But honestly, compared to uh, 2007 when it was created, this is a 2007 car, it was pretty revolutionary. The other interesting thing is that this engine and gearbox were mated together. They were designed together. Now, the US is the only country that got the manual gearbox because we yelled and screamed and shouted that we wanted it. Europe did not get it. They got only the SMG. And of course, People yell and say they want the manuals, but then when the manufacturers produce them, they don't buy them. In fact, the manual gearbox, and I'll leave it up to Autovlog to talk about this, but one of the weakness of the manual gearbox, it's a it's a uh, six-speed gearbox, and the SMG, it's seven. It's a six-speed gearbox that's mated um, in the manual, and it just, the gearing is wrong. It's just not quite right for this car but again they did it right and they did it because Americans said we wanted this gearbox so they gave it to us so I'm gonna do a little I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tunnel run here in just a minute because <clears throat> you've got to hear what this exhaust sounds like in the tunnel to understand why I'm in love with this car so, as I said, there, I've not had any problems with the engine on this car. I've not had any problems with the gearbox. In fact, just before this uh, went out of warranty, we did a good review, just um, check up on it, and everything was fine. So, um, to be honest, I couldn't be any happier um, with the car. The fit and finish, the leather is still good. It doesn't look like it's particularly worn. So now we're about to enter the highway. I have it now. I'm actually, there's an M button on here, which I've programmed everything to be the highest. That gives you from, goes from 400 horsepower to 505, so I'm going to hit it. Changes. I've taken the stability control off. That's how I've programmed it. So it's MDM M. You'll show you what that looks like on the dash here. But it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. Now we won't be able to go fast through the tunnel, but that's okay because this is more about the sound. And when I get into the tunnel, I'm gonna get super quiet and just kind of let you take it all in because that's what this thing is all about. It's the feel and everything. So, here we go. Into the tunnel. I love...
you can't beat that in a naturally aspirated engine a car. It's just, it just is incredible. This car goes back, and I gotta tell you, it is something else. Oh, here we go, the tunnel. Really, the engine produces 505 horsepower. On the low end of this is uh, the torque is sort of modest. It's not the best, um, but once you get it past, um, say, 3,500, uh, 2,500 to 3,500 RPMs, this thing just it just roars all the way up. Um, to 80, well, 8250 to 8400. Um, with some software, some folks have actually raised this to um, uh, close to 9000. But having said all of that, I guess a question that you would ask me now is would I buy this car all over again, knowing what I know now, 12, almost 13 years later? And to be honest,